Hey guys, it's Jess from Sally Tomato and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be making a beginner friendly tote bag. This minimalist tote bag has been quintessentially refined in all the right ways. I think you'll find that it's dressy enough for the office, but also casual enough for everyday use. This medium sized purse has two exterior slip pockets, box bottom corners, an optional magnetic snap closure, an interior slip pocket, and comfortable shoulder straps. I'm sure you're eager to make one of your own, so let's get started. First, start by gathering your supplies. You'll need a piece of main fabric. We'll be leaving most of this project raw edge, so some types of fabric you could use are cork fabric, faux leather, craft or any other fabric that doesn't fray. If you'd like, you could also add a magnetic snap. It's a great option to keep the items in your bag secure. In this tutorial, I'm going to share with you three different magnetic snap tutorials. So you can choose one of the following if you'd like to add a magnetic snap to your project. You can choose to add a two inch invisible bar magnetic snap, a three quarter inch invisible round magnetic snap, or a standard magnetic snap. All of these options are available on our website. The standard magnetic snap comes in five different finishes. You can choose between nickel, gold, antique, gunmetal and rose gold. You'll also find a list of helpful notions in the pattern. You may also need a pair of scissors, a rotary cutter, mat and ruler, seam ripper, polyester thread. My favorite type of thread is Sulky Poly Deco. This is a 40 weight polyester thread, which is very strong for bag making and it has a nice sheen for all of the top stitching as well. Sewing clips such as Clover Wonder Clips, chalk or a removable pen, basting tape, a stiletto, a Teflon foot, and you might also want a zipper foot. Download the free back to basics tote pattern from sallytomato.com and follow the cutting instructions. Use your rotary cutter and mat or a ruler and scissors to measure and cut the pieces in the pattern. You'll need to cut a piece for the front, a back piece, a front exterior pocket, a back interior pocket, two shoulder straps, and then also if you're adding a magnetic snap, you'll want to cut two pieces according to the pattern, either for the invisible bar magnetic snap or for the invisible round or standard magnetic snap cover. First, we're going to attach the front exterior pocket. Measure one inch in from each long side and mark on the wrong side with chalk. With wrong sides together, fold each long edge so the raw edge is even with the mark. Use some sewing clips to hold the fold in place. Attach a Teflon foot or a Teflon zipper foot to your machine if you have one. If you don't have either of those feet, you can add a layer of tissue paper on top of your fabric before you begin sewing to help prevent your presser foot from sticking to your fabric. You can sew directly over the tissue paper and the tissue paper can be easily torn off after sewing. Set your sewing machine to a three millimeter stitch length. Top stitch a quarter inch from each folded edge. Mark a vertical line seven inches in from one short edge of the pocket on the right side. Mark a horizontal line three inches up from the bottom edge of the front on the right side. With right sides up, position the pocket on the front piece of the bag so one long edge is even with the marked line and the short edges are even with the sides. Use sewing clips to hold in place. Start by sewing the right side of your pocket in place an eighth inch from the edge. Then pivot to sew across the bottom an eighth inch from the edge. When you reach the vertical line on the pocket, pivot and sew along the line up to the top folded edge. Pivot and sew back down just next to your first line of stitching. Then continue sewing the rest of the pocket with an eighth inch seam allowance. Mark a horizontal line four inches down from the top edge of the back on the wrong side. Also, fold the back and interior back pocket in half to mark the top center. Cut two six inch pieces and one eight inch piece of basting tape. Adhere the shorter pieces along the raw short edges 
of the back interior pocket. Remove the paper from the basting tape to expose the other sticky side. Then adhere the longer piece along the long bottom raw edge. Double sided basting tape comes in handy for holding faux leather or cork in place in hard to clip areas because we can't pin on these types of materials. Pins will leave permanent holes and weaken the material. I cut my basting tape a little long so I'm going to trim off the extra. With wrong sides together, center the pocket on the back piece of the bag so the top long edge without any basting tape is even with the marked line. Start by sewing the right side of the pocket in place an eighth inch from the edge and pivot to sew across the bottom. Pivot again to sew up the opposite side. If you want to hem the top edge of your bag, now is the time to do so. Simply mark a horizontal line a half inch down from the top edge on both your front and your back piece. Then fold the top raw edge down to meet that horizontal line with wrong sides together. Then you'll top stitch an eighth inch from the edge. If you'd like to add a magnetic snap to your bag, I'm going to share three different options. An invisible bar magnetic snap, invisible round magnetic snap, and a standard magnetic snap. I'm going to use a scrap of fabric for each type so you get the idea on how to install them. A simple way to attach an invisible bar magnetic snap is to first mark the top center of your front bag piece on the wrong side. Then measure down a half inch from the top edge. Center one half of the invisible magnetic snap against the wrong side with the positive side face down. Use a zipper foot to top stitch as close as possible to the magnet. Trim excess plastic close to stitches. Use double sided basting tape, glue, or basting spray to position a piece of fabric for your magnetic snap cover over the wrong side. Then top stitch the cover in place an eighth inch from the edges. If you don't want to top stitch this down, you can use hot glue or permanent glue to attach the cover instead. Then you'll repeat to attach the remaining half of the magnetic snap to your back bag piece, but this time with the negative side face down. A simple way to attach an invisible round magnetic snap is to first mark the top center of your front bag piece on the wrong side. Then measure a half inch down from the top edge. Center one half of the invisible magnetic snap against the wrong side with the positive side face down. Use a zipper foot to top stitch as close as possible to the magnet. Trim the excess plastic close to the stitches. Use double sided basting tape, glue, or basting spray to position a piece of fabric for your magnetic snap cover over the wrong side. Then top stitch the cover in place an eighth inch from the edges. If you don't want to top stitch this down, you can use hot glue or permanent glue to attach the cover instead. Then you'll repeat to attach the remaining half of the magnetic snap to your back piece of your bag, but this time with the negative side down. A simple way to attach a standard magnetic snap is to center one washer on a piece of fabric for your magnetic snap cover and mark the slits for the prongs. Use a seam ripper or scissors to cut each of the slits. Insert one half of the invisible magnetic snap so the prongs poke through to the wrong side. Place the washer over the prongs and bend the prongs inward. Next, mark the top center of your front bag piece from the wrong side. Then measure a half inch down from the top edge. Apply double-sided basting tape, glue, or basting spray to the wrong side of the cover and center it against the wrong side. Top stitch the cover in place an eighth inch from the edges. If you don't want to top stitch this down, you can use hot glue or permanent glue to attach the cover instead. Then you repeat to attach the remaining half of the magnetic snap to your back bag piece. Mark the center length of each strap by measuring one inch in from one side edge. Fold each side of the strap to the center. You can hold the folds in place with wonder clips, basting tape, or glue. I usually just use my stiletto to fold the strap as I sew. 
Then top stitch a quarter inch from each folded edge on each strap. On the wrong side of the front, measure two and a half inches in from each side edge and mark a vertical line. Also, measure down two inches from the top edge and mark a horizontal line. Then measure an inch and a half from each end of the straps and mark across the straps. Position the right side of one strap against the wrong side of the front so the outer and lower edges of the strap are against the marked lines. Start by top stitching across the strap at the inch and a half mark. Back stitch to the center, pivot, then sew down the center to the end, pivot, and sew across the end of the strap, back stitching in place. Repeat the same process to attach the opposite end of the strap and attach the remaining strap to the back of your bag. This top stitching will give a unique effect shown on the front of the bag. Cut a one and a half inch square out of each bottom corner of the front and the back by measuring an inch and a half in from the side and bottom edge. Place the front and back right sides together. Use some sewing clips to hold in place. Then sew the sides and the bottom edge with a half inch seam allowance, stopping at the cut corners. With right sides together, match the side seam and bottom seam and align the raw edges. Sew together with a half inch seam allowance, making sure to back stitch. Now you can turn your bag right side out. Use your fingers to roll the seams. I like to attach wonder clips to the sides and bottom seam and leave them overnight to help keep the shape of the bag. After all that is done, you can start using the sleek tote. Share photos of your completed project using hashtag Sally Tomato. We'd love to see how you're using your new stylish bag. Also, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any future tutorials. Thanks for watching.